Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to Tanz Ha's Talk, the world's only English language program focusing primarily on Hungarian folk music. I'm Kalman Magyar Uchi, speaking from Toronto, Canada. Episodes of Tanz Ha's Talk, which combine a music of a mix of music and stories delivered by yours truly are available as always on tanzhaz.com that's t a n c h a z.com or on youtube just search tanzhaz talk and subscribe so you don't miss anything today's episode is an edition of tanzhaz talk interviews these are episodes where i delve into long form discussions with a wide array of guests All episodes of Tansha's Talk Interviews are available on all popular podcast platforms, including Apple, Google, and Spotify podcast stores. Make sure you subscribe to those podcasts and leave a nice review if you like what you hear. Today I'm excited to have on the program Shoma Shalamon. Shoma is joining us from Tordosh, Hungary. Some bio on Shoma. He started out uh, as a dancer, as all great musicians do, folk Hungarian folk musicians do. Yeah, he was taught by uh, Sabo Szilard and Német Ildiko Kush, or Mummy, as we call her, in the dance group Ma- in Marton Vashar. And actually, Shoma's parents are both, are both physicians or doctors, a uh, pathologist, and his mom's a dentist. And actually, interesting, I learned this yesterday, talking to Shoma, that his uncle is Liber Bondi from the Tukrish Ensemble, which many of us here in North America know personally. Um, Shoma is a fabulous musician. He is an expert on the folk flute, he plays the accordion. He's played in many bands, uh, just to name a few. Tuz Langyo, Erdőfü, Magos, Fanfara Complexa, and formerly the Buddha Folk Band. He's performed at too many festivals to mention, uh, but I'll mention some of them here. Euro Radio in Sweden, Womex Festival, the Madison World Music Festival in Wisconsin, and the Atlantic Music Expo in Cape Verde. Um, He's toured multiple times in the U.S. and Canada, which is how many of us got to know him, uh, including at uh, Chipka Camp and uh, down the the camp down in uh, Florida. Um, Aside from being a great musician and a good dancer, He's an ethnomusicologist and a lecturer. He has his undergraduate and master's degrees from the folk department of the Liszt Ferenc Academy of Music in Budapest, and he's currently a candidate for the DLA degree, that's Doctor of Liberal Arts degree, at the Liszt Academy, and we'll talk a lot about that, of course. Uh, He currently lectures at the Liszt Academy in Budapest, the Kodai Institute in Kecskemét, the Massachusetts College of Art and Design, which is very interesting. He's doing that online. Um, and he's also given lectures. Uh, actually, last year he gave some lectures at the Berkeley College of Music in Boston, the world-famous Berkeley College. He teaches a folk music theory and instrumental folk music and also folk music repertoire and music of Hungary's neighboring countries. And he does a lot of this in English as well as in Hungarian. He's done field work in Transylvania and also in Ecuador a few years ago. And he's a part of the International Council for Traditional Music, where he attended and presented at last year's conference in Bangkok. He has won multiple awards, including the very prestigious Junior Prima, the Young Master of Folk Arts, and he uh, received a special prize in the international TV show uh, Fő Salot a Pavo. He's also a smart man in the fact that he's married to the wonderful singer uh, Agi Enyedi, Enyedi Agi, who we know from the Hungarian State Folk Ensemble, and Mogos, she's a fantastic singer, and he's the father of two uh, kids. Uh, the youngest one, the baby, is called Kalman, which is fantastic, and, uh, and I guess that's a payback in return for me calling my son Shoma. Um, he lives in Tordash, which is where he's calling in from, in the outskirts of Budapest. And you want to be super annoyed? He has accomplished all of this at the tender age of 31, having just turned 31 years old just a couple of days ago. He is going places, will be an important person to help cement the Tansas movement on the world stage. And I'm very, very happy to welcome onto the line Shoma Shalom. When are you there, Shoma? Yes, I hear you quite well, Uchi. It's so glad to be here with you, 
virtually, even virtually. Yes, you're virtually here with me. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on, Shomo, and uh, you have a wonderful bio, and, um, and, and I'm really pleased that you know, we're able to speak with you in English, and, um, and hopefully, if, I mean, if you don't understand anything I'm saying, just let me know, of course, and I'll do the same with you. Um, Shoma, tell me about your grandmother. Yeah, I know this. You just don't fall on the face of the earth and start getting into the tansas. Um, tell tell me about your background with uh, with your with your grandmother and how she was seminally involved in the tansas movement early on. Yeah, it's uh, quite funny you ask me that because uh, I'm right now sitting in her uh, living room because uh, uh, the Wi-Fi uh, uh, sign is not uh, currently not available and uh, uh, and I cannot talk uh, loud <laughs> right now in my own house because my kids are sleeping. They uh -huh. have their after afternoon nap right now, so I had to come by my uh, grandma's house, who's actually living uh, in front of me. Uh, so it's a little bit. Uh, she she lives a little bit closer to my house than the grandma of a Little Red Riding Hood. But uh, <laughs> but basically uh, basically I just came by to to visit her for uh, for a short interview with you uh, in her living room. But mm -hmm. uh, okay, back to the topic. Uh, uh, she originally graduated uh, as a PE and biology uh, 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 teacher. Uh, uh, high school teacher and elementary school teacher, and in the, in the mid '60s, in the mid mid of the '60s, he uh, started to get connected with uh, with uh, with the folk dance uh, folk dancers, the folk dance collectors of of, of that uh, that time. Uh, for example, uh, he he established uh, she she established a friendship. With uh, Martin George, George Martin, who's maybe the most prominent uh, uh, ethnologist of of, uh, of Hungary, perhaps uh, perhaps worldwide. I I can read this uh, statement, and uh, and they started to work together, and and she she uh, participated in a lot of uh, trainings and and uh, and uh, uh, trainings for for fault as educators actually uh, hosted by. By Martin George, and after that, uh, she befriended uh, Fultin, Yolan, Yolan Fultin, and they started to 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 establish uh, the methodology for uh, children's education, children's Fultin's education together. So uh, she actually also participated in publishing uh, of a lot of volumes on on uh, on Fultin's education for for children, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, she started. She she was actually the first one who started. Uh, started uh, folk dance uh, in, uh, folk dance courses uh, for children outside of Budapest, so in countryside, mm -hmm. uh, in a country uh, elementary school in 1969. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, in uh, 10 years after that, to be precise, in 1979, uh, she founded the Sassorship Folk Dance Ensemble in uh, uh, in uh, in Martin Vashar. So last year it was the 14th anniversary of the Sassorship. And actually, if if you just mentioned uh, Dreisiger Kalman, uh, whom you speak uh, yesterday, uh, his son Danesh uh, also also uh, was a member of the Sassorship Ensemble uh, briefly uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the 90s. Right. So what what is your grandma's name? The one we're talking about. Oh yeah, <laughs> actually, I just I just forgot this uh, slight detail. Yeah, uh, she's uh, Erje Bet Sholomon. Erje Bet Sholomon. So, Shoma, you know, coming up in school, at least here in you know Canada and the U.S., where children are exposed, I would say, very very minimally to their folk dance and folk music. What is now? The, I mean, you you know, you're 30 years old, so. Uh, or 31, um, you know, for instance, you coming up in school, what kind of exposure do you get uh, in terms of the average um, school kid uh, in regular class uh, in terms of uh, what you get for folk songs and da dance and music? Um, I think uh, the trends are uh, in the in the in the past in the past twenty years. Uh, the trends uh, show an increasing uh, proportion for 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 the presence uh, of uh, folk dance and folk music within the within the regular regular uh, school kids' life in Hungary, for example. That's that's what you mean, yes? Yes. So, like, you're yes. are you? So, yeah. So I I I I 
I think there are positive trends uh, now, especially in the past past ten years. Uh, when I was a school kid, though, when I when I was in elementary school, when I was in 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 high school, uh, uh, in that time that was not important, not not highlighted to to to. Uh, how to say to generally show uh, Hungarian folk culture for for uh, uh, for school students? Of, of course, with the exception of of, of those who uh, who went to art schools and 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 specialized art art uh, art uh, education institutions because that's different. Because in the art schools, for example, the Marton Vashar uh, Elementary School, which was which was a which is parallelly an art school, and also the uh, elementary school in Tordas, which is parallelly an art school, uh, their pupils uh, must. Uh, uh, participate uh, uh, in in folk dance courses and also they uh, can learn folk singing and folk uh, music uh, uh, on instruments as well because because it's the part of the of the cur uh, curriculum there. Uh, though, uh, though, uh, are, in general, in general, uh, it wasn't it wasn't a trend when I was a, when I was a, a high school student, but uh, but since then, since then, uh, there are. Uh, definitely some some uh, obvious uh, obvious positive changes in this way that's what i what i think right so uh, if i grab a kid if i go to tordash right now and i go to the abate say the convenience store and i grab a, a a 20 year old guy wearing a baseball cap and i say hey what's the tans has does he know yes Definitely in Tordas, definitely. Okay. You know, Tordas, Tordas is Tordas is Tordas is kind kind of village. With uh, I, I always I always uh, make uh, 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 um, a parallel that uh, Tordas is the folk Hollywood. So th there is a there is a parallel between Tordas and Hollywood. So the, what's Hollywood for? The movie industry is Tordas for the dance has. Okay. And oh, wow. uh, and my street, my street uh, where I live, actually the Rakuts street, is kind of uh, Mulholland Drive in Hollywood. So you know, that's the or Beverly Hills, because because of uh, so a lot of uh, fall dancing and dance has member families living in this street that it's it's uh, it's give unimaginable. us uh, so give, for, give for, us some examples. Uh, who, who, yeah, Casha Bela, Casha Bela, Casha Bela, the famous folk photographer. Uh, uh, after him, after him, uh, or or his neighbor, actually Bela just moved to Juro, but uh, his. Uh, uh, former wife still lives uh, here, Erika, who's uh, wonderful and brilliant uh, in uh, in uh, folk pottery. Uh, and uh, right to them, uh, Janis Kati, uh, former singer of Bujic Ensemble and former wife of Gabor Eredic, lives lives lives. Uh, they moved to France for for uh, I don't know 15 years, but they just moved back with uh, her uh, French husband Alain. And also, uh, there's uh, the nephew of uh, Giorgi Martin, who also uh, lives uh, here. And uh, and uh, uh, above everyone, Sabo uh, Sisi and Nema Tiradikomomi, the couple, the folk dancer couple who uh, taught me to dance and who, who managed the Sassorsi Ensemble for for uh, three decades. They, they they live here in this very street as well. So, as well as my father does, by the way, who's a skilled folk violinist and also a pathologist uh, at the Ujoki uh, Hospital in Budapest. What What is it about Tordas? Now, Tordas is what, about a half hour drive from Budapest? Uh, I can, uh, if there's no traffic, I can make it in 25 minutes. But <laughs> There's traffic. But, uh, <laughs> okay. But uh, yes, it's 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 uh, it's uh, thirty kilometers far from from okay. from the city center. I, I know here we we talk about minutes, and in the in Europe they say kilometers. So, um, so thirty kilometers away. What is it about Tordas that makes it the Beverly Hills Rodeo Drive? Uh, Rakoci Street is the Rodeo Drive of 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 Hungary. What's what, what, do you know what attracts people, and including yourself, to uh, to live there? Oh yes, that's a complicated question. Uh, all of it started with, uh, I think, the, the first, first, the first ember to to ignite this this bomb was was originally George Martin himself, because uh, George Martin he was a late child 
uh, amongst his uh, siblings and uh, one of his older sisters uh, was uh, called Martin Eleonora and she was married she was married uh, to uh, to the vicar the, the, the Lutheran vicar here in Tordas called Botta uh, Botta Jolt I think that was he was Jolt but I don't know his his first name to be to be honest but Botta okay. he was a very 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 skilled and very very clever man uh, he was also a theologist. He spoke a lot of uh, dead and living languages and and so on. And uh, the older sister of, of Martin, Martin Eleonora, married to this Botta. And, and then the, when Martin was a young uh, kid, he spent quite a lot of time here in Tordash, especially not in Tordash, but there is a farm uh, farm uh, near Tordash called Erdő Major, and Martin uh, spent a lot of time there. Mm-hmm. And uh, after some time, around the 80s, uh, Perhaps because this connection, because one of the one of the earliest settlers here, or one one of the earliest uh, uh, people here who, who just started to interest towards Tordos, it was Eri, P- Eri Peter, the the adopted son of Martin uh, and Kasha Bela. So they were the first pioneers who, who moved to Tordos, and and they just uh, uh, so that's that's one wave, that's one wave, and there is another wave, there is another other angle because. My my grandma is from Martonvashar, and Martonvashar is uh, the neighboring town of, of this village. So it's it's just some five or six kilometers far from here. And uh, and uh, my grandma uh, and my grandpa moved there in the 50, in the late fifties. And my father was born there. And also my father's best childhood friend Liber Bondi was born there. And after that, they just married the, the, the to, into the same family. Uh, because because my mother's uh, sister is uh, who's actually my godmother as well. She's the wife of uh, of Liber Bondi, right. and uh, the wife. Yes, of, that's, that's that's the wife of Liber Bondi. Yeah, and and uh, my, my so my father was born in Martovasha. He was raised in Martovasha as well. Liber Bondi was born in Martovasha. He was raised. They were raised together. They lived in the same street, and. Uh, and uh, they started to dance in uh, Martin Vashar. They started to play music together in Martin Vashar. And after that, uh, uh, and it's an interesting fact, but uh, all the siblings of my of my uh, grandmother uh, lived in Tordash even in the 60s, in the 70s, to that time. And and they just started to move to Tordash. My 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 father and 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 we we actually we actually moved to Tordash uh, at the end of the of the of the 90s. And uh, and uh, so Tordos was was uh, slowly settled by by these folk musicians uh, and folk dancers. Sobo Sisi uh, and Nima Tildiko, uh was invited to to, to manage the, and to lead the, the censorship group in the in the mid eighties, I, uh, if I remember correctly, by Kasha Bila and my father. And they just uh, started to uh, at first they uh, at first they they uh, visited the rehearsals for Budapest, and after that they moved to Marton Vashar for a short period, I think. And after that they moved to Bordash. but uh, uh, after the uh, so I don't know. After eighty nine or eighty eight, they 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 were here in the Rakotsi Utsa Sisi and Mommy. So it was a gradual thing. It's a gradual settling. Uh, and uh, oh, I, I forget uh, one very very important name. Uh, there was also a dance group in Tordash, uh, which was which was uh, established in the in the early nineties uh, by the older brother of uh, Yashag uh, ensemble leader. Uh, Suj Gabor, mm-hmm. uh, Suj Gabor, and his brother was uh, Suj Bela. Right. Suj Bela, and Suj Bela uh, established the dance group here in Tordash in the early in the early nineties or the late eighties. I don't I, I don't remember uh, exactly. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Bela Bela passed away uh, for in in maybe in ninety four, I think. Right. Uh, at a very very uh, young age. Yes, he did. Uh, but uh, before that, he was he was a very important uh, important central uh, central person uh, in the in the culture of of Tordash, and in the nineties, uh, the Tordash uh, cultural center, which, which is called Mufaz, or or uh, yes, Mufaz in Hungarian, uh, in Hungarian the, the leader of the cultural center was uh, not else but the, the uh, also uh, uh, known, especially in the USA. Uh, 
pretty much and favorite of everyone, Chigo. Chigo yeah. Holmos Attila, the member of Tukros band. He was for a short period of time the leader of the of the cultural or the director of the cultural center in Tordash or the cultural house. Yep. So Tordash is um for those listening that are looking to invest in uh, real estate in Hungary, Tordash sounds like the Silicon Valley where you want to be for the revival movement, Shoma. And I, uh, I, I actually didn't know this about uh, Tordash. And uh, it, yep. it's fascinating to hear. You mentioned some names. Uh, Eri Peter was one of them, which, of course, is from the Mujikash group, um, which is worth mentioning. Um, so uh, I asked you to grab a random guy uh, talking about childhood education, about the Tanzhaz movement, and, uh, you know, I asked you to gra- grab a random kid, a uh, 20-year-old in Tordash. That's probably a bad example. Let's just, I wanted to seal that up and see what a random child somewhere else, for instance, in the city, in Budapest, would, would know about, about, you know, eh, what they would know about the dance, folk dance, folk music, folk singing, what they get in terms of their elementary and middle school and high school education. What are, how much are they exposed to? Um... If you grab a random kid, if you grab a grab random random kid, uh, perhaps you will be disappointed by the by the answer. But uh, but uh, I, as I as I mentioned before, uh, there are positive trends right now. So so it it all it, it still uh, remains uh, a kind of subculture, uh, but uh, but it it uh, it gains a larger and larger part in in the in the. In the education, in the education, so it's uh, it's a fac- uh, it can be it can be chosen facultatively uh, now as part of uh, uh, as as a sport activity or mm-hmm. something like that. So so okay. so uh, slowly, slowly and gradually, it starts uh, the folk music and folk dance. I think and I hope uh, it starts to and then not 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 just folk music and folk dance, but uh, but. Uh, Generally, the, the the proper thinking towards our traditions, towards the traditions of the Carpathian Basin, the traditions of Hungarians, traditions of even our neighboring ethnicities, it starts to uh, how to say uh, become as something something fundamental, some, something fundamental. I am sure that we have to wait decades years or even decades to 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 even even uh, make this this uh, this roots even deeper in the in the in the Hungarian common thinking but I think those the science science I just experienced these days are promising Good. that's excellent. what I think excellent yes and uh, oh, sorry I, I just forgot one very important thing about the tortoise and the 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 revival, what did you say, the Silicon Valley of the revival movement. I just forgot to, that we have a, another neighboring village called Juro and this kind of infection by revivals, revivalists is also contaminated Juro as well because, for example, Mihu Attila, my, my wonderful Primash friend and also uh, my Kereskoma, which is, uh, I think, a relation which, not, that, which doesn't exist in English language but uh, is the god father of my kid. Yeah. Uh, Mihu Attila lives in Duro, also Kasha Bela moved to Duro, and there is another wonderful folk musician, Guardian Zoli, who's a clarinet player in the Changalo band, he also lives in Duro. But in the in the in the in the close close uh, neighborhood of Tordash, you know, so the in the neighboring village villages like Koyaso, Val, Pazmand, uh, there are lot lots and lots of folk musicians here in this in, in the vicinity of Tordash. Uh, also, Trigo Robi, if you know him, yes. he's a wonderful bracha and hegedi player, uh, member of the former Sifra band. He lo- played a lot with Sabo Victor, the, the primash from Mezuko. Mm-hmm. Trigo Robi also lives in Europe. Well, it's good okay. to know. It's good to know, and actually, it's very I- interesting. Um, let me shift a little, uh, Shomo. Your okay. your parents, your dad's a pathologist, and your mom is a dentist. Um, w- w- some point, you come home. And have a conversation with them that um, you're going to be a musician, an ethnomusicologist, a lecturer. Uh, what's that conversation like, and what is their reaction coming from a family of professionals? Oh my God! I don't want to give you family family secrets of of, <laughs> of uh, 
Family secrets of of uh, of violence against me. No, no, okay, I'm just joking. So I had to, I had to, uh, I had to, um, uh, uh, I had some very very serious conversations, and not not necessarily with them, but other family family members as well, because you know, my my family uh, is originally uh, uh, comes from from uh, from the. From the very, very uh, distinct uh, uh, historical ethnic stratum, which is called as village intelligentsia. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you know this. <laughs> this no, I don't. What is what is that? The village intelligentsia. It's you know the the members of the village, uh, which members are not uh, farmers and they are not the the how to say the the farmers or shepherds or or the or the common people, if if you can say so. But they are. That's especially the, the the line of my mother, the, my, my my mother's line. That they are they are the the educated, the few educated families from the village. Mm. The, the, the the teacher, for example, the teacher, the school teacher of the village, school teacher, the priest, the doctor. Right. Those are called those are called village intelligentsia, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and. Uh, Within these within these clusters of, of society, uh, that's called in, Hungary, in Hungarian it's called falusier Within within these clusters of society, there is a there is a model there is a model and, and requirement for for uh, okay they are not actually not not first generation village intelligentsia because because they are uh, they are my grandpa my my great grandpa my great grand uh, parents were members of village inter village intelligence because this kind of this kind of structure was primarily uh, uh, dominant in the Hungarian villages uh, before the World War II uh, but this kind of uh, social cluster has a very had a very very important uh, tradition to what can you be what is what, what career should you choose and mm -hmm. uh, and that's what uh, that I also uh, uh, so this this is a meme as an internet meme that's, that's the Balkan family model. <laughs> uh, Bal the Balkan family model is you know do you do you have four ways to to four four career options that you have. First one is to be a lawyer. That's you 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 already fulfilled this. Career that's option. me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's you. Second one is to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Third one is to be an engineer. And the, and the fourth one is to be a disgrace to your family. So that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's that's the Balkan Balkan career options. Those are the Balkan career options. And uh, and uh, it maybe it's not coincidental that my father, though, is, although he's a is a wonderful and talented and skilled and devoted performer of folk music, never became a, a truly one hundred percent professional folk musician. Though when uh, when he was a young resident doctor, and he had he had no really real income from the doctoral practice because he just finished the university, and we were young kids with my with my brother Gaspar. Uh, for a few years, he, he was a professional musician, but but basically he is a doctor, so he's a, only a hobby musician, and and uh, maybe that's a little that's a little bit thanks to the pressure uh, he he always had to. Uh, Face uh, from the uh, from the ancestral uh, from the ancestral <laughs> side. Uh, okay. Anyway, I was always uh, I was also uh, meant to be. Uh, by the way, uh, when I was when I was when I was in elementary school, I was I was already uh, uh, planned. They planned to to uh, to push me to the to the career of a classical pianist. Mm -hmm. By the way, mm -hmm. because because uh, according to them, I showed great sign of, of talent in, on classical piano. I never realized any any size of it, but but uh, I, I just realized that I had to practice for six hours a day. But I, I plan to be a classical pianist, and I was I, I even I even was selected to the Bartok uh, Bartok Conservatorium, the Conser Bartok Conservatory, uh, to the to the Department of Special Talents, mm -hmm. and uh, and. Uh, but after after that, I just turned myself towards folk music. But even even my parents and my ancestors, I or my not my ancestors, my family knows the folk music. They also folk musicians. But for as as a career option to be a folk musician, it was and 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 the fact that I wanted to be a folk musician so, uh, 
besides, originally I, w- I wanted to be a phone dancer, and it was uh, very uh, hard and scary for them. So they they just uh, they just spend years uh, to convince me to not to be a folk musician because you know my kid you don't want to uh, die of starvation and stuff like that uh, and uh, uh, but uh, what I what I what I decided uh, in the meantime and perhaps uh, perhaps uh, thanks to their uh, speeches their their uh, influence on me and their pressure on me mm-hmm. that if I be, if I will be a folk musician, I try to do it as best I can, and also I try to do the the. I, I try to incorporate not only the performing part of it, but also the theoretical background and the theoretical uh, theoretical uh, fundaments, theoretical basis of the of the folk music, which which we call ethnomusicology, for example. Uh, not only because of of uh, of I try to be uh, some kind of academic. Uh, or try, and try to do it in a, uh, in, in, in a kind of academic level, but also I was always a guy who was interested towards the why, the why. So why does it? So, so the, the reasons, so reasons behind, the reasons behind the phenoma, phenomena. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I mean. Uh, and and that, that's why, therefore, I decided to to dig myself into it even deeper than a regular, I don't know, revival user does. And that's that's. This process is now going, so I just try to to, to get as much as much as in, as much information as I can about the the, the hidden mechanisms between between the, the folklore. By the way, uh, maybe maybe because not maybe because the family pressure, I also spent uh, three years in uh, in uh, the Budapest uh, uh, at first in the Pazmány uh, Peter University as. Uh, uh, as, as, as an engineer, uh, or I just learned to be an engineer to to engineer of molecular molecular bionics actually molecular wow. bionics engineer. Uh, there there was uh, there was a molecular bionics program there, uh, which uh, which was just started in in, uh, in 2008, and uh, I just uh, was there for two years, and after that I I, I also moved to, uh, towards the. Uh, BMA, so the Budapest uh, Music Egyetem, mm-hmm. uh, 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 no, Budapest University of Mechanics and Engineering, I think, and uh, and then I then I also also uh, studied there for one year at the at the de- department of uh, of uh, bioengineering, because in the in the high school, by the way, I was I was explicitly interested towards biology, but not the way of uh, as a, as the, uh, the way as a physician does, but as a way as a, as a I don't know right. uh, other uh, other manner other manners. Uh, uh, okay. Anyway, I had I had this slight uh, uh, stop. De- detour. <laughs> detour. Detour. This slight detour. That's what I, that that was the word I, I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So it's slight detour, but uh, but basically uh, after that I just <laughs> I just uh, had a very successful uh, moment when I could convince my parents to, parents to not worry. Uh, because I would like to go to the folk music department, uh, mm-hmm. and and uh, actually uh, I did my engineering studies with a very very half half heart. So with with with, with very very how to say um, it was not not it was very insufficient uh, the energy which I put into the to the engineering studies because because basically I spent all my time. Uh, with, with playing music, then with Buddha folk band, and in, in, in with participating in various folk kochmas uh, around Budapest, because, because yeah. so that 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 was the that was those years were the years where I started to learn accordion, where where I learned the most, uh, because every every day uh, of the week I was uh, in a, I was in a different folk kochma every night, and I was playing music uh, different folk kochma every night from eight o'clock until. Until all, and uh, you know this is really good to to learn an instrument because uh, because you can learn uh, the best way to learn a folk music when, when you play it functionally in the dance hall, but it's not not really fruitful to to uh, to to uh, do uh, engineering studies uh, parallelly. Yeah, well, yeah. I that that I know. Uh, I, I spent a little too much time during law school uh, playing a lot of dance houses and festivals. So I, I know quite well. Um, uh, Shoma, what you mentioned your younger brother Gashpar. Um, does he did he fit into?
the uh, the fourth category, disgrace to family in the Balkan family model. What, what ended up with him? <laughs> he, he, he absolutely fits to the fourth category because he is a he is a fine young art historian. So he's also a, also a Belchese like me. Right. So he's, he's also he's also he, he, he's an art historian uh, and 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 uh, a fine mastermind, fine young mastermind. He uh, currently does his uh, doctorate uh, in uh, in the Humboldt University of Berlin. So he, he, right now he lives in Berlin. He, he he tries to get a degree in the Humboldt PhD degree, and he's mm -hmm. a he's a wonderful wonderful uh, researcher. Right now he also works in a research pro project in Leipzig. Uh, they are uh, his his field of specialty is is uh, uh, art archi uh, architecture history. And now mm -hmm. one of his projects in Leipzig is, is to, to, to monitor on, and to, to research on, on the, on the uh, artificial folk villages created for, for the Expos, the Millennial Expos uh, at, the, at the millennium of, uh, of, uh, of uh, 1900. So, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, he, he's working with the, with the, with the Millennial Expo, which, which, which happened in 1900, uh, exactly, mm -hmm. you know, one 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 hundred and twenty years ago, yeah. and uh, and there was a millennial village which, which was built in the in the in the Varoshliget in Budapest, uh, and and he he researches that Amazing. the thing, and he he's got a wonderful little daughter uh, who was born uh, last uh, July, uh, Julia. Uh, she's 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 wonderful, and 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 uh, and uh, they uh, so he and his wife and and uh, and uh, his his little baby they live in Berlin and. Uh, but they plan to to move to Hungary when when Gaspar's uh, doctoral studies are finished. Gotcha, Shoma. How did you learn? And he's a, oh, sorry, and he and he's a brilliant folk dancer. Right. That's very important. Right. That's important. Okay. Um, how how did you learn English so so damn well? Uh, please don't be ironic with me at first. No. Or cynical. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a joke. <laughs> this was the first oh, well, serious thing I've said all interview. No, how did you learn English? Yeah, and you know, if 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 a lawyer says it wasn't a joke, especially if Uchi does, uh, it's it always it's always a joke. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, basically, I graduated in in the Fozekos uh, Mihai Gymnasium, which is considered as one of the best uh, uh, educational institutions in Hungary. So it's a, it's a very good high school. But uh, uh, but uh, the, the the reason I I use English every day, almost every day. That I have to because because that's uh, due to my job. Due to my job, I, I actually uh, teach teach uh, all, uh, courses and and give lectures uh, in English for the foreign students of the Liszt Academy. So uh, I had a I had a quite quite uh, youthful level of, of of English knowledge even before I got these jobs uh, three years ago. But uh, but uh, I think that uh, since then, since then, and and since I traveled to the USA, I uh, regularly on a regular basis, I my English developed uh, a little bit. But uh, it's uh, it's uh, so good to, to work together in the uh, in the folk music department with colleagues like Donny Liptak, for example, who, who who also is brilliant in English, but he 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 he's even. Much better than me because he, he knows the literature, English literature, very well because because he's, he he graduated in the, in the English faculty, and originally after or before before he he got uh, the diploma as a folk musician and ethnomusicologist, and uh, and uh, so even in the folk music department, I, even I can a lot uh, I, I, uh, I I I can learn a lot even even from colleagues there. So for example, Don Liptak is wonderful. In English, but I, I I try to do my best. Uh, my primary focus is not the not the not the uh, one hundred percent correct grammar and and stuff like that. But but uh, mainly mainly the 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 useful and efficient communi communication with the with the with the pupils. So for me, that's that's uh, crucial to 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 get the info to get the info or, or, or crucial to to. To explain the info properly to, to them, and and actually the Hungarian ethnomusicology sometimes contains uh, very very abstract phenomena, and and those phenomena are, uh, uh, are are truly complicated to understand even for Hungarian students. <laughs> That's what I, I, I experienced as well when I when I when I, when I just attended the first lessons of Istvan Pavai, uh, because because those those phenomena uh, catalyzing the, the the 
certain certain pathways in, in folk music and, and what's happening, why happening, the internal mechanism of of, uh, of the del- of the melody types, tune types, tune variants, stuff like that. Those mm-hmm. are truly abstract things, and you need a certain kind of abstraction even if you learn it in Hungarian. And I have to do, I have, I have to convert all the all the method of thinking to English, not only the the, the, the not only the tools in language. So so uh, it's it's sometimes truly demanding, uh, and and. Uh, and that's why I'm 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 very 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 grateful for this for this opportunity because I think it it trains my English skills. Uh, it's a very good training for my English skills. So, so, so for example, just to mention you a story, the Kashmir Koda Institute, I I I give only three uh, three lessons there, three courses there. Uh, a week, which which is three hours long practically, and I have to drive there every uh, on, on a weekly basis. So I have to drive there, and, and, and I, I spend I spend some five hours with the traveling to drive mm-hmm. to catch commit from Tordas and to 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 to, right. to drive back to Tordas, you know. And I I basically I basically uh, uh, spend all the all the money I I earn there for for the gas for the <laughs> gas, but, but 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 I do it I do it only. To keep my English in good shape, in the, and and to, to 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 train my English, to train my English to to, to be to to strengthen my my, my language knowledge uh, and and to 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 challenge to to for because of these language challenges, and and I can experience if I if I'm in condition, if I'm in practice with English, mm. uh, if I go after that, if I go to to native environment, for example, if I go to the USA. As I did last time in Berkeley uh, in, in last February when, when we were there with Andres Hodorod, and it was so easy to me to communicate with the students, so easy to me to to tell them what what, what I want to do. So I, I I didn't have to struggle with with any any English uh, expressions, although there were certain truly abstract stuff I needed to uh, explain them, but they understood it, or I hope they understood it, and it was it was a good experience. Uh, and uh, and I think uh, that's that's crucial these these days at these times. It's very important to uh, have for for the ethnomusicology, for the Hungarian ethnomusicology, even for the Hungarian revival, to have uh, as much uh, English speaking, uh, but also uh, ethnomusicologically uh, trained experts who can communicate with the outer world, with the foreign countries. That what. What the heck's happening here in Hungary? What the heck's happening in the Hungarian folk music? What are the uh, what are the peculiarities of the Hungarian folk music? Because there are sometimes uh, a lot, a lot, whole lot of misunderstanding towards what we do, and and uh, and to make this uh, clear, we have to uh, we have to possess a lot of English speaking experts in this field, and I try to be one of them. Right. With more or less, uh, more or less success. Yeah, that's very important, Shoma. You've said so many great things. I, I have about six thousand questions follow up, but let me just kind of underscore what what you just said. The last thing you were talking about, and I I agree. I think it's very important that we don't link uh, uh, the the future of Hungarian folk music to the language of of Hungarian. So. Um, and and you know, traveling here, many of our most passionate community members are not Hungarian. They don't speak Hungarian, yes. and that's musicians and dancers alike, and even singers. And and we there, there's a great need, and that's one of the reasons I started this uh, this Tansas Talks uh, uh, show, is because um, there's wonderful resources in in Hungary coming out of Budapest and other cities, but but you know we we really need to. Make sure my father likes to call this cultural diplomacy. That uh, cultural yep. diplomacy should be conducted in a cultural, you know, and, and, yeah, cultural and acad- acad- academic diplomacy also. Yeah, so the right scientific diplomacy. Right. Yeah. So th- you know this this should be in English or in other maybe world languages and um, you know so we look forward to you know your work. There's so many questions I would I I would like to ask about this, but let me kind of understand the. The, the, the typical student at, at LIST that you teach uh, to. Um, LIST Ferenc Academy, of course, is one of the most renowned European academies of music. So you're going to get um, various international students there from Asia and from other parts of you know Western Europe and all, all around the world and North America as well. So it is a required course for them to take. 
is ethnomusicology yes. or Hungarian? What, what, what's that? Yeah, why are you teaching this stuff to them? Yes, it's a required course, actually. Uh, there are uh, different groups, different classes for, for uh, foreign students. Uh, we have to we have to distinguish the, the the students at the Budapest campus and the students of the Kodai Institute at Kecskemét. Uh, at the Budapest campus, uh, uh, there uh, there is only one uh, group with with less number of people. Uh, they are uh, typically selected there, or or uh, uh, they are uh, uh, applying there uh, for instrumental studies. So they are. Their 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 major the major uh, major program is is uh, is instrumental studies. So they are pianists, they are cello players, violin players, and so on. Uh, uh, meanwhile, in the Kodai Institute in Kecskemét, the students are uh, are uh, participating in the network of the Kodai 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 centers all around the world, mm -hmm. and they are uh, music educators. They are music educators, and they are. Uh, 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 they are even even higher in number. Uh, so, because the Kodai Institute is uh, Kodai Institute educates only foreign students. That's that's what uh, that's why it is uh, uh, established for. There is a network of Kodai Institutes all around the world, which is which uh, which uh, which uh, uh, which. Uh, its goal and and the goal of of these institutes uh, is to to uh, to spread the Kodai method uh, all around the world through local local uh, music educators and those music educators to be uh, those uh, few students are uh, uh, learning in the in the Kecskemét Kodai Institute and so the Kodai Institute actually has a lot of partnership with. With, with, with a lot of institutes, for example, the uh, University of uh, Ohio in Columbus, for example, mm -hmm. in the USA, mm -hmm. uh, and they also have, have some kind of relationship, a partnership with Berkeley as well, and they also have a partnership with the university in Seattle, but I don't know the name of it, But they, and they had uh, a partnership with the University of Oakland, or they have, I don't know. Uh, they have a lot of partnership uh, in China, in Australia, in New Zealand, in uh, in Singapore, in Malaysia, mm. uh, in Iran, in Greece, and in Europe, in various countries in Europe, of course, uh, in Ireland. So, so that means that the palette of my my uh, my students is very very mixed. I have uh, we have a lot of Chinese students every year, for example. Uh, Sometimes it's not too easy to work with them because they not speaking English quite well. Uh, but uh, some of them uh, are, are truly talented. Uh, for example, and, and it's, a, it's a kind of uh, uh, how to say uh, 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 a good, 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 uh, good feedback to me uh, actually, mm -hmm. uh, or I would like to tell it as uh, as. Uh, as a, a good, good, uh, a good story uh, of uh, of my my teaching uh, uh, career yeah. career uh, or, or a little bit both myself a little bit. Uh, uh, so uh, I had a, a wonderful Singapore uh, student there, Robin. He's called Robin, and he just uh, he just graduated in the Kula Institute after five years of learning there. And he he just moved back to Singapore, and he decided to to uh, to write his PhD thesis, and he decided a topic of folk music. So he he, he would write it a folk music, and and you should know that the Koda Institute is primarily not a folk music institute. So it's it's a uh, the, uh, the director of the institute is a choir conductor. So the main focus of Kodai Institute is choir conducting and 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 vocal 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 uh, uh, studies education and and stuff like that yeah. uh, and uh, and this guy chose uh, uh, the 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 folk music as a topic for his his PhD dissertation and and he, he told me that he told me it uh, it it been uh, because of my classes so at, I was nice. I was very proud I was very proud uh, and and I and I, I I also told him I I would be available for any questions uh, as a as a external consultant or something like that for him 
Okay, uh, but uh, okay. Basically, in Koda Institute, we teach uh, uh, music educators. In the Budapest in, uh, Budapest campus, I teach instru- uh, students of instrumental studies, and they they are fewer in number. But this uh, this uh, lesson, uh, the folk music course, is right. Indeed, it's it's compulsory for them, so they have to. They have to. Uh, they have to participate in in these uh, lessons, uh, and within these lessons, of course, I, I uh, my my basic benchmark is is the Hungarian Hungarian uh, folk music and Hungarian ethnomusicology. But I try to also explain some kind of general phenomena in ethnomusicology or rules, which rules are used in Hungarian ethnomusicology with success and and could be applied for other folk music cultures. That's what's, what's very, very important, that the Hungarian ethnomusicology in the past uh, uh, 120 years developed a kind of methodology which is non pare in the, in the, in the world because, because uh, it, at, at first it unifies a, a kind of uh, uh, ethnographist, folk uh, cultural, cultural anthropologist uh, view, which also the uh, the ethnomusicology schools of the United States also apply, but the main interest, main interest uh, of the Hungarian ethnomusicology is, is the the musicological part of of the ethnomusicology. So, so to analyze tunes, to 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 make uh, make uh, types, make typologic uh, system, the systematization of the tunes, and and uh, and uh, and and with this methodology, the Hungarian ethnomusicology research in the in the past uh, 120 years, created a, such a good toolbar or toolkit, which which uh, which contains general general rules, general rules which which rules can, because they are general, can be extended even for non-Hungarian music, mm-hmm. uh, uh, with with some kind of uh, reservations, of course, but but it can be extended uh, uh, to non-Hungarian music. So if you are, uh, that's what I believe, if you are a foreign student and you Learn this kind of uh, uh, of methodology. You can you can apply it with certain with certain modifications on on your own folk music if you'd like to, and and it will help you to find uh, a lot of hidden conceptual uh, conceptual uh, uh, content on your folk music on your uh, on your uh, personal or your your individual folk culture. If you are if you're an Irish Irish folk music, which was which was uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, hidden until this time uh, uh, of, for you. So that's why it's very, very useful, and that's why I, what I try to, to explain them. Of course, uh, for the, for the, a 40-minute long uh, class, uh, once in a week, it's not enough right. to right. too much, but I try, to, I try to do my best. Well, uh, that, that's gonna, that, I, I'm going to have you back uh, one day uh, to talk specifically about, you know, what the first three lectures look like, you know, what, what, how you unpack um, the, the, the complexity, because it's very complex for me, uh, Hungarian folk music, um, and just even saying Hungarian folk music is nonsense, because, you know, uh, there's a, every culture is colliding, and, you know, you talk about Rabokus, and you talk about the, the Saxon influence, and, the, you know, the Slovak influence, and, and it's like all, it's like just a, a, anything you pick out, there's so much going on. Um, so how do you unpack that? I know you probably don't delve that much into that. Uh, certainly for the at the DLA or PhD level, you you do. But that's going to be a topic of discussion, Shoma, that I would really would like to have with you. I think there are many members in our audience who would love to hear about that. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Let me. Um. um let me. I, I know you love coming to visit us here in the Canada and the U.S. Um, there, it's it's something more than. For you, it's something I can sense. It's something more than just business. It's some. It's more than hey, you know, we get to have fun and travel a bit and and see some uh, new places. You, you're, you, personally have some kind of connection to, uh, to our community here, and um, I'm, I'm not sure what it is. I want to ask you about it. Uh, what 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 do you love so much about us, and what do you sense that's special about our community here in North America that Perhaps might be missing from the Tansas community in Hungary. Uh, in certain aspects, I think the American community uh, resembles more for the for the for the golden age of the Tansas Mozgolom than what's happening right now in in Hungary. Mm. So uh, 
uh, I what what I think uh, uh, I well, when was the first time? So I I, I do not do not uh, uh, I do not uh, travel to US for a very very long time. So my first travel was in 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 uh, in uh, 2014. So unlike for example older senior musicians like Tukrush or Havadar who's traveled. He, there for 20, 30 years, something like something like that. Not to mention music and 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 and, and so on. Yeah. Uh, I, I my first tra- travel there was in uh, twenty fourteen, uh, and what I uh, what I experienced is is uh, uh, there is a different level of enthusiasm, for example, towards towards uh, uh, folk music events, towards folk music events, and also there is a different. Uh, uh, and maybe it's that it's it's uh, maybe it's because because you know the American audience is not uh, even even now even now in in 2020 when uh, not, not in 2020 that's do not mention this year because this is that's a special year thanks thanks yes. to the to the to the to the pandemic but uh, even in 2019 for example uh, they the, uh, the American uh, audience American Hungarian audience it's not. Uh, they are not spoiled with uh, with uh, with uh, with a uh, prolific uh, prolific uh, amount of Hungarian uh, performers because it's it's still you know the other half of the world that the plane ticket is expensive so so you 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 won't necessarily get for example in Toronto you won't necessarily get a Hungarian performer every weekend yeah okay. And then, and and perhaps that's why the expectations and the, and the enthusiasm towards uh, Hungarian performance is, is it's it's always higher and and it imp- this kind of this kind of tension it it uh, it implies uh, 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 parties for example with very very good atmosphere so great bully mm-hmm. for example yes. and 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 uh, and thanks to this kind of attitude that I I could make really good friendships uh, with. With certain people there uh, in the USA, just to mention a few of them, for example, uh, Shola and Andra from Detroit, or 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 you, or uh, or Varga Otilia from Sarasota, who was one of my first hosts there, and and we, with OTV, I like almost like family members. Yeah. So, for example, uh, her daughters Blanca and Schenke, they always mention me as Uncle Shoma. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, it was, and it's 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 always always uh, always mesmerizing to 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 meet this one and 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 meet, meet this kind of attitude and 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 uh, especially especially uh, especially with the people you mentioned with the people who who, who actually not Hungarian and you cannot talk Hungarian and cannot speak Hungarian but they have uh, they have a, a astonishing devotion towards Hungarian folk music like like for example the the. The members of Tisza Ensemble in in DC, like Kathy Lemont, or like 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 Joe Krupa there, or or like uh, my first flute uh, flute student there, uh, Craig Bacard in in, in in Washington DC, and and for me it's I think it's it's kind of something it's something great achievement of the Hungarian dance has uh, because you know uh, what I uh, uh, what I think. Uh, do you hear me? I hear you. I hear you great. Okay. Yeah. So what I think, what I think, uh, based on uh, based on the fact that a lot of a uh, lot of folk music ensembles visit uh, the United States, like Havadar, like Gajo, like Gustavu, like uh, uh, like these bands, uh, and they play mostly for for mostly for, uh, for for Hungarian audience, Hungarian houses, in in folk camps and stuff like that. Based on that, sometimes it can be said in the Hungarian mainstream media that Hungarian folk music just just breaks the boundaries and and Hungarian folk music uh, becomes uh, world famous. But in truth, uh, I think if, if you go if you go to, to to play in a Hungarian house in an in an American city, that doesn't make. Hungarian folk music more world famous because you play for Hungarian audience. So, so technically, it's the same if you play in a, in in the in the cultural center of a Hungarian city or a Hungarian village. But but actually, the the center itself, the location itself, is not in Hungary but in the USA. Right. Do you understand? I do. What, understand. I'm, what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, and uh, so these are, I think, not for. For making Hungarian folk music, these are not for the cultural mission to 
to to uh, spread the, the Hungarian folk music all around the world. These are these things are for for building links with 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 our Hungarian uh, fellow Hungarians over the ocean, uh, which is also a very very noble cause. But uh, when I see when I see parallelly with it, when I see people who are who are, who are civil not Hungarians, they don't speak Hungarian. They are they are full Amer- full Americans. Uh, basically, most of them are old uh, old. Uh, uh, all the sixty-eight, uh, uh, sixty-eight uh, revolutionist uh, 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 people, and they just they just started to to be devoted with 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 the Hungarian folk dance through the ethnic dance theater movement. If I'm correct, yes. Yeah. This with the ethnic dances, and 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 some of them just started to stuck with the Hungarian, and I think it's something something wonderful. So when I when I when I first when I first uh, 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 heard the, the the life story of Katy Lemon, the the the, the f- uh, collection, the field trips uh, she had with with uh, with uh, with her late husband Rudy in the eighties, and so it was in, in Transylvania. Yeah. I said, oh my god! <laughs> so it was it was it was it was wonderful, and I I think. And that's that's another very important aspect. I love to play them as well, but uh, concerning the Hungarian Hungarian communities, uh, I I so so I'm I'm true uh, I'm truly happy because because within the last last six years the, the, uh, since I since I visited the USA I, I think I, I I I really found good and honest friends there who, uh, who are also devoted towards folk music and also devoted towards having good parties and 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 who are also devoted to to know it uh, even more in, in 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 an even more accurate level so for example last time in Chipke you know it was it was my long time dream come through to go to the Chipke because I I, I always heard that that's such a great party and 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 uh, and uh, and how how, uh, how how good the atmosphere is and how the, in, the entire venue is wonderful and everything mm-hmm. and uh, actually i wasn't disappointed in this in those in those uh, in those uh, 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 experiences in those rumors in, in, yeah. in those rumors about mm-hmm. the ship so they they were all true because because it was it was wonderful to play there it was wonderful to be the part of, of, of that community, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, and what I what I felt there that that people there is is open open towards the, you know because I, sometimes sometimes what I'm saying what I'm trying to explain especially if, especially because I, I like to talk very much uh, <laughs> sometimes it's it's annoying it's annoying to to uh, to uh, to get deeper into the to the so it can get high a little bit higher than the regular dance has Muslim user level of the folk music because that's a little bit the user level mm-hmm. and and to be to, to, to see the ethnomusicological background and the hidden context of the folk music it's a kind of little bit kind of uh, of, uh, of programmer level or admin level right. stuff and right. and uh, and uh, and sometimes sometimes this this uh, kind of uh, uh, speeches by me are ignored sometimes mm-hmm. of course I my my close friends in 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 uh, in Hungary, like Andor Maruzhansky, Mihola Tila, or, 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 or uh, other, I can mention other names, they are also interested very deeply. But I, 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 uh, I encounter with a little ignorance towards deep, deep, deep uh, contextual knowledge sometimes from other uh, uh, sources in the Tans and Muslim. And in, uh, you know, in, in, uh, uh, in the Chipke, everyone was open for it. So I, I could, I could, I could have a have a have a deep conversation basically with everyone. I just start the conversation with, or or, or that that's not there's there's another other uh, other solution that they just uh, politely didn't show that they are annoyed. That's another. Yeah, they may, maybe they're very American and very polite. You know. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's that's another that's another other uh, mm-hmm. option. Well, you yeah, so I mean, you, you certainly have a lot, you, you you certainly have a lot to share on this show, Mo, and I. I you know, I'll, I'll I'll say that your feedback echoes, uh, for instance, Busha in Orbi and 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 Fitosh Dejur that come here, and their their um, uniform um, uh, observation is that, hey, everyone here is participating. Everybody here is living the golden age, as you say. Everybody here is it's they're not just sitting around and and drinking and hitting on girls or whatever. You know, like. That, uh, uh, that's not what's going on here. Um, yes, you know, you know, you know what's you know what's the word? I love that's an intense experience. 
Chitka. It's a very intense experience based to the regular regular dance has life uh, of of uh, of, uh, of Budapest. So it, it's it's a kind of intense experience because you know in Budapest there is thirty well, not thirty but three four four coachmas every day in, in in different various locations of the city. Yeah. So we are we are literally spoiled spoiled because we we have abundant abundant amount of folk music folk dance and 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 even the camps the summer camps is you know I go there but but there are there are just just hundreds of camps <laughs> basically and you know in the Tansas Black so they all, 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 all of them are advertising the camp and they have some vouchers that Balasut Komando Alalalem to the Michodo you but uh, but uh, but in the chip that's that that's that's a very single one that's a very single one okay, along with the Pitita of course but it's a very single one it's 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 a kind of institution it's a kind of institution and I, uh, uh, you know, where I felt the same same vibes uh, in in the early Tukrash tabors mm. at the beginning of the of the of the of the of the, the two thousand one and two. So, by the way, a lot of lot of uh, current Chipke residents uh, uh, also participated in those Tukrash tabors. And when the music starts, everyone stands up and shoot, cha, and say, "Let's go to dance." Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's that's wonderful. Well, and I, and and I, I you know I know you've you're not. Here. Here during the regular course of the year, although you have been here for Pontozo in Toronto, and I'm sure your observation was the same or is the same, and yes. and, and I can attest to that. And uh, of course, the being you know what what uh, was my observation in, in the Pontozo? That's that's a little bit different. You know, when I was in in the USA, I was I always lacked the that very age uh, age group. Which age group uh, in Hungary bears the entire mos- in their dance has mosaic on, on its backs, back, on their backs? Uh, uh, I speak about the age age group between between I don't know eighteen uh, and and uh, fourteen, mm-hmm. oh, 40, 40, 18 and forty. So okay, so those the youngsters, the youngsters, because in Hungary the, the complete the complete uh, the, the complete uh, system of institutions are built on this this uh, this generation. The young generation, yeah, the young generation between between eighteen and forty, uh, and if you go to the USA, uh, you will uh, or, or to the regular camp in the USA, or, or if you play in a in a in a city in the USA for a Hungarian community, you will find young young children, so children, and you will find uh, uh, old people mm-hmm. uh, who are interested towards folk music, and this young generation. Is missing in a lot of places, and my first encounter with this young generation is, was in Cleveland. That was the the crew of Pignitsky Kebe, for example, who's right who's right now here in Budapest. Uh, and in the tour in the Pontozo, I I met that very young generation, that young generation of 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 the of the uh, of the young uh, dancers, the the young young adult. And uh, and it was it was uh, it was wonderful to, to see them and and. And for 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 brief minutes, because because you know uh, Toronto is a large city, but the, but the Hungarian Toronto Hungarians it's a relatively small community. So it, so it, so it worked like for me uh, for a brief uh, period. Like I, I just I just said to myself that they are behaved a little bit like like the youngsters behaved once in a village. Mm. In, Okay, because they are they are they are very few in numbers. They are very few in numbers. As for example, in a in a in a in a in a, in a small village with I don't know two thousand inhabitants once, which was completely isolated because because you know in the, in the old times the village there was there was no uh, too many cultural and personal interaction between the village even even neighboring village. So they, the the youngsters they had their own community there, and and when I saw the the, the dancers there. In the Pontozo, I had a little, uh, a little bit the same feeling, mm. and it was it was wonderful to experience. That's great, Shoma. You know, I'm I have about 575 more questions to ask you, um, <clears throat> and uh, follow ups and stuff that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I, I I think this is a good place to stop though uh, for for now, and um, you know I I really appreciate your time and your your uh, your energy and your your input. I think. Uh, people like you uh, who are able to 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 speak in us speak with us here in our language um, in, in in English are, are going to be a very important part of the future generations of maintaining what we do here. I don't know if you have any final final words of 
of, of wisdom or greetings uh, before we uh, we take off here. Okay. Uh, actually, I hope that next time we, we speak, I, I will uh, I can provide with with some some uh, uh, some interesting literature on uh, on English uh, language. Uh, 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 concerning folk music, for example. Yes, yes. So, so yes, I asked you about that when we talked last week or a couple of days ago, and I was I definitely would like to know about resources in English that might be coming out or might already exist. Uh, that and I'm I'm happy to sh- I, I I could share those offline as well or online with people. Um, so I'd love to hear about that. But but um, you know we're gonna have you back, Shoma, for sure. And um, okay. you know I I, I again. Uh, you know, take care of your little young family and be safe and, and, and be healthy. And um, we're going to see you back here uh, for sure next year, if not before. Okay, okay, Ochi. Uh, I, uh, I, I wish you all the same for you and, and your little family. Thank you so very much. Take and, care uh, and, and uh, thank you. And, and, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Yep. No, I, I just wanted to uh, sign off here properly. So, yeah, I just um, wanted to say that. I'm going to be so glad that about what? I, I just want to say a mielőbbi viszontlátásra. A mielőbbi viszontlátásra, yes, until we meet again. So on behalf of Shalomon Shoma and Kalman Magyar, uh, thank you for tuning into Tanz Has Talk. And as Shoma says, a mielőbbi viszontlátásra. See you next time.